Welcome back. We're getting ready to start 1942, mission three. And just to recap, we have six victory points and uh, five experience points. And uh, off we go. So we're gonna roll for the map and the mission type. The map will be the red die, the mission type will be black. I'm gonna speed this up a little. All right, so um, this is the map, which is still map one. And the mission type is five. Oh, we're gonna do near target. I have never done near target uh, ever. So this will be a fun one. So near target. Um, an element of the game that we haven't seen yet is going to be introduced, but we'll get there in a second. Okay, the red die will be for OP, black will be for escort. All right, so for the operational points, we rolled a five, which is four. OP, and then we rolled a six, which is no escort. So you can see here for this, there's no escort. That is actually awesome sauce. Okay, so they're over the target, no export, or no escort. So we don't have to worry about the pesky fighters ruining our day. Uh, we get Four operation points, so we're going to grab four fighters. Um, again, a reminder, we only, it's 1942, so we can only take our fighters. Just going to look real quick over here. Let's get some more experience. I'm going to do Grim, Freeling, Dull, and Automate. I'm going to grab the ones who already have experience points. Freeling, Grim, Dull, and Atomite. I uh, hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. So this sheet is done. There is um, something we're going to have to look up. And I can pause the video, but I'm an amateur at this, so I don't have a way to resume it. So if you can bear with me here, I may have to pause just so I can find it. Um, but actually, let me look at Here's how you find it. You go through your mission setup, and then determine situation, resolve mission. Um, where would it be? So maybe it's 15. Yeah. By the way, I always call it threat level, but it's really called lethal level. So forgive me on that. And then this is a good example of what elements are uh, in our map, we only have one element, but in the other maps, you're going to have multiple elements, and they might overlap with each other. Oh, okay. Okay, so we're going down the turn sequence. The one I want to find is Blast and Flak. That's the new rule, that being over the target. If you recall, we skip that all the time. I know what Blast is. It's the Blast and Flak. It's the Flak part that I don't know. Recovery, blast, I'm almost there. I'm just checking real quick, because we have the blast procedure over here, which I fully understand that. It's actually pretty neat when we get there. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna just look in the rule book. There's no explanation of what flak is. Here we go, near target. It only occurs on a near target mission and only at the end of the blast and flak phase. At the end of each blast and flak phase, resolve flak by determining where the flak attack happens in each of the formation that is where the ordnance explodes. Then apply damage to bombers, if any, and hits to fighters, if any. Okay. Find the page in the situation manual. It's the same you use for the formation map. Roll a die and use the same number. Oh, so this is just like uh, is it? Oh, you know what? Okay, okay, okay. I'm gonna sound like Joe Pesci for a bit. Okay, okay, okay. Um, all right. I think I know what's going on. So we're on the 
near target. I've never seen a near target situation before. So I'm betting if I, so here we go. So you know how we normally roll here and these are the damage that occur before the mission starts. But I'm betting if I go to page three, or right here where the near target is, yes, see, look, it looks different. That's what's going on, ha ha. So what this is saying is if you're approaching for an attack from the oblique or the tail or this oblique, so from this flank, that flank, or the tail, your fighters take damage. But that's only if you're in the approach box. That's this approach box here, or those approach boxes up there. So we're gonna roll on this chart every turn. And obviously if we're not in an approach box, it doesn't affect us. And sometimes the bombers take damage. See right here? And then this is a case where the bombers are taking damage or we also take a some damage. This is new, um, never been over the target before. So we're risking our own planes as well as um, trying to destroy theirs. Okay, that's, that's very interesting. Okay, um, <clears throat> the other thing I need to figure out, right here, a pilot with a skill of luck may be used to cancel a flak hit. That's what I needed to know. Because this luck skill, sometimes you're not allowed to use it. Um, the other thing that's important is if you destroy bombers, um, you earn one victory point. Obviously, if you're not playing the advanced game. Um, but you don't earn experience points. That's the difference. So you get victory points, but no experience points. And uh, that's only if the flak destroys the bomber or knocks it out. If the flak damages the bomber but doesn't knock it out, then that's not a big deal. That's just helping you out. Um, and then they give you a pretty nice example here. Um, but this was something I had never experienced before, so I didn't bother remembering it. So yeah, um, it all makes sense. Sorry for the sidetrack there. And then one more reminder. Since it's near target, basic game, we're only gonna get one victory point, no matter what we do. Okay, so uh, we are ready to go. There's no escorts, so we're gonna leave the escort uh, off the chart. And let's go to page three. Uh, first thing we have to do is we have to roll a die and figure out which of these two formations we're using. I rolled even, so we're gonna be this formation up here again for the third time in a row. Okay, no problem there. And now we're gonna roll for this chart. I rolled a five. So we do get some damage. That particular bomber right there takes a damage token and we get fuselage hit. So I need to roll a 10, I roll a two, so we flip it over. It's one damage on that bomber right there. Okay, moving down, no anchor, sun. I rolled a three. The sun is high flank. Um, move the token to high flank. And then uh, this will be the red die, that'll be the black die. So I rolled a nine and a four. So we get five tactical points. And six turns. So, five tactical points, and it's a six turn game. I did that right, correct? Yes, I did. Okay. All right. Oh, and then it's got a nice, right here, flak resolution. That's what I was looking for. It always has really nice uh, reference to the rule book. And I was wondering where the heck that was at, and it's right here. If I would have just gone a little bit further. So, um, Anyways, I'm going to have to keep that situation manual out. We can put the regular manual away. Best GMT rulebook yet, by the way. I don't own that many, but I own a lot of the coin game ones. And uh, Unconditional Surrender. And this one is amazing compared to those. I hate having a separate playbook from uh, the rules. This one, the rules are structured in the way that you play the game. Whereas Unconditional Surrender, I have to flip, 
like 50 pages in or 40 pages in just to figure out what do I do on my first step of my turn and what's my objective and how do I win? I mean, it's just, I don't know. It just doesn't make sense to me. But the more GMT games I buy, the more it does make sense. So I can see how some of you, it's just natural to you. But for so those of us that were new to it, that was the very first GMT rule book I ever read. It was just gobbledygook to me. Um, the coin games taught me that there is a order to the madness and I started to get better at it, but this one just blows them away. And I definitely wish GMT would do more like that. Anyways, um, <clears throat> okay, so we had four operational points. We picked our four fighters. Uh, off we go. We're gonna be on turn one. We're coming in low. There's no escorts, so we don't have to worry about that. The sun is over there. So we're gonna do four of us all coming in low at the tail. Okay, that is turn one. None of this other stuff happens. Uh, oh, Blast and Flak, I gotta remember that. Blast and Flak is happening. Okay, so we're gonna roll our die here. I rolled a seven. Uh, nothing happens. Yeah, bunch of bozos with the 88s. Um, okay, so uh, turn two. Now I'm going to move. I'm going to approach from the tail low. So now my fighters are at risk of being hit by the blast and flak. And that's what we're going to do now. I rolled a nine. Ah, we all get hit. Jeez Louise. Uh, so they hit us and don't hit any of them. Oh, and it didn't matter which direction we were coming from. What an awful roll. Okay, so all four of my guys uh, are going to use their luck to avoid being hit. So Adamite, Mission 3, L. Grim, Mission 3, L. Mission 3, L. So on the very second turn of the game, we've used up our luck ability. So that's it. There is no more luck for the rest of the game. That was it. Uh, oh, what a bad start. Okay, so, so far I'm not liking being over the target. Okay, uh, now we go to attack. I'm going to take this bomber down. All four of us are attacking that bomber. Um, we do have to do a collision check. I have to decide if I'm doing evasive or, or direct. I will do evasive. Hold on. Oh, oh, oh. I just realized I was playing a rule wrong the entire campaign so far. So here it is. To get this rot and swarm, or, or sorry, yeah, rot and swarm, you have to be determined. Okay, if you do evasive, you cannot get these bonuses. Now this one was okay. You could get that one. I think in every situation where I got this bonus and used it, I had a luck ability I could have also used. So I don't think it impacts our campaign at all. I have yet to use this in our campaign. Um, so that is not as big of a deal. But it makes the decision making right now really crucial because I have to be determined to get this swarm and this is what I want. I want the swarm. Um, I'm gonna do it. I'll do the swarm and I'm actually gonna make it so there's two. We're gonna attack two bombers. And I will do the, I'll make them determined so I can get swarm. And that means I have a lot of risk coming up. And so that risk, uh, I'm gonna show you in a second how that's gonna play out. Uh, first things first, uh, we're not out of the sun. We're gonna select our mode, which is determined. This is the collision checks. This could go badly, and it has in the past. So I'm gonna draw two. The first one's gonna be for doll. And it's, 
uh, that one and that one. Okay, so E is a new one. Pay the TP cost and the fighter breaks away to the tail. If you do not pay, he exits. So uh, we will pay the TP cost. But this is what sucks. Um, oh, the marker stays because we were determined, but both of these broke away to the tail. So I'll break them high like that. And um, <clears throat> I can no longer qualify for Schwarm. Then I'm going to roll. I rolled a 10, which is good. So this doesn't happen, but I keep that there for because I'm determined. And then I pick my mode. So I'm going to go um, we're going to dive. No. No. These guys are going to return low. And then what I'm going to do is with these two they're both gonna do the same thing. We're gonna roll towards the sun high. So we're gonna climb up and get the sun. Okay, so with that said, let's draw two from the tail. Okay, uh, the threat level is one. And yeah, we're fine there. Uh, we're going after that bomber up there. Or no, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, we're good, we're good. Uh, okay, so we're coming in low, threat level one. We have a jam, but we do hit. So this top guy here, Grim gets a jam. Jams are not fun. Let's just get that out of the way. I'm looking for my jam token. Okay, so with a jam token, it says even odd. And um, basically, from here on out, if he hits the bomber, I have to roll a die and get an even for the hit. If I roll an odd, then the weapon did not hit. So in this case, I scored a hit. But in the future, um, if I score future hits with Grim, I have to get an even roll. Uh, so it's a 50% chance that my hit won't happen. So... Uh, and then, of course, there's a no ammo. We don't, that's even worse. But, uh, so Grim now has a jam, but his hit does go through. And let's get the hit in. It is a, a wing clip. So let's roll. I rolled a seven, not quite. And that is, ooh, four damage. That's a good one. Okay, and that's it for him. And then we're gonna do the guy below. Atomite, it's a one, it's low, it's determined, so he takes a hit. And in this situation, oh, I forgot to do advantages. See, I didn't get this, because you need to have four fighters. Since two of them returned, I didn't get this. But I did get this, the rote, because I have two fighters and they were both determined. And the only reason I'm mentioning that is because right now I need to cancel a hit. And I actually had one. So I'm going to use it to cancel the hit. And they're both done with their attack. So now we're going to do continuing fire. Uh, we'll start with uh, Grim first. Uh, lucky shot. If the pilot is expert and a bomber is in its space, that bomber is damaged. Fighter may not be low ammo. Well, good news is, is we're just jammed. So we actually got another hit on the bomber. That's awesome. I've never seen that one before. All right, so it's a wing hit. Let's see if we get a 10. Nope. All right, but it is another two damage. So he's up to six. And as you saw on the card, there were no hits. So Grim is going to arrive in the return box. And then now we're going to do Atomite. He's not diving, so good news there. He had a threat of one, and he was determined, so no damage. So he's going to go to the return box as well. And we discard those. Move on to turn three. Okay, some interesting things are going to probably happen this round. The first one is, of course, we, we don't move, but we return. So these guys are going to 
turn. Return. So they're going to be ready to attack next round. That's the nice thing about being determined is you return quicker. But the other nice thing about being determined, I've mentioned this like a zillion times in this campaign about how these tokens stay behind. So uh, the collision tokens actually stay on the board. And we're going to see that play out right now. So we go to Blast and Flak, and then Cohesion after that. So let's resolve Blast and Flak first. So I'm going to roll a die. I roll a six. I have it over here to my right. Sorry for the glare. The six is I'm going to hit both of those bombers. Ooh. So both of these up front are going to get hit. And we're not approaching from any direction, so we're safe. Six was a good roll. I like that one. All right, so we did two hits. I'm gonna draw two. The first one's gonna be for the bomber up here. That's a wing, and this one's a fuse. Well, this one, we don't roll for. So he has two damage. This one we roll for. Let's see what we get. Oh, I rolled a 10. Oh my gosh. Okay, well, that is a destroyed. That little symbol there, that little hit looking symbol means that the plane is destroyed. So we go over here and grab a destroyed. And um, because it was destroyed from the flak, nobody gets experience points for it, but we will get victory points. So that is, that is excellent news. And what this does is this reduces the, the threat level all around it. Oh, very excited about that. And then the other thing I'm excited about is this cohesion check. So we count one, two, three, four, five, six. There are seven on the board. So I just need to get a six or less. Oh, come on. All right. Well, you're not going to get to see how a cohesion failure works because I rolled way too well. But here's the other part of the rules you've never seen yet is, okay, these did help us, or they were supposed to, but those were temporary. temporary. So now they go off the board. So they don't stay on forever. They just stay on until the next turn. So basically, there was a near collision. The bombers got, you know, they almost lost cohesion because of it, but they were able to, to survive it, and they didn't lose cohesion, and now after the near collision's over, they restabilized. That's basically thematically what just happened there. Although this one got shut down by a flak, which is very good. Okay, um, that is it for the turn. So we move turn four. Okay, turn four. We are coming in high. These are coming in low. We do have to worry about flak, which is going to happen right now. So let's roll. Let's get another six. Roll to one. Uh, one is nothing. I'm sorry for the glare again, but there's absolutely nothing with a one. So nothing happens there. We do a cohesion check. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, there we go. We got a one. So since we failed the cohesion, this element loose comes out. So what this is, is this is yet another marker. So the cohesion check is now going to be a six next time. But the other thing is, is that, so this is a minus one, right? So this three becomes a two. This adds another minus one, so it becomes a one. So all these bombers get a minus one everywhere. The entire element gets a minus one. This one only impacts the spaces around it. This impacts the entire element. So even these fringe ones, like way out here, that's now a zero. Um, so this is very good. And our bombers are gonna come in uh, for the attack. We resolved the cohesion. And we're going for some blood here. Um, I'm going to go here because that's now a one. With these two. And no. I'm gonna go here with those two, because that's now a zero. And these ones have the sun protecting them. And so they're gonna come in and attack this bomber here, like that. So they get a one, and they're attacking this bomber here, because they're coming from that direction. That's how you know. Um, these two obviously are coming from the tail and they're going to attack that bomber up there. Um, we do have out of the sun. I already put that on there. 
Remember, uh, since we're going to do determined, the out of the sun is a die roll on whether or not it helps us. It's not guaranteed. The evasion, the evasive is sort of nice. Um, so now we do collision checks. I'm going to do two of them. Let's hope I do better this time. Uh, okay, the dowel is going to be first. Uh, no impact. I like it. And then that marker is going to stay around for the cohesion. Now we got to do the other one. Come on, don't roll bad. Don't roll bad. No, 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 no. Okay, uh, we have a collision. Okay, if evasive mode, treat is no collision. If determined, roll a die. If the number rolled is less than the number printed, a collision occurs. See rule book page 38. Uh, not good. One of our fighters is destroyed. Uh, not good. If a collision occurs, roll another die. If we roll even, the fighter collides into the bomber. The fighter is destroyed and draw four damage markers. No bailout. That means the pilot is killed. If it's odd, the fighter crashes into another fighter and both are destroyed with no bailout. This is awful. Okay, that swarm is what I was going for. I may never go for swarm ever again. This is awful. Okay, well now bad things are happening. I was having a really good campaign. So... I rolled an even, so that means they crashed into the bomber, and it's, remember I told you I'm always going left to right if I don't say it, so it'll be Grim. Grim is killed. But I draw four damage tokens for the bomber. So one, two, three, four. And we gotta do some maintenance here. Grim, our most experienced pilot, is now dead. Okay, um, we do have the ability to uh, to bring in a green guy to replace him. Uh, it's a rule I haven't read very much, but uh, uh, that's obviously between missions. We don't get to do that now. And um, as far as the plane, I'm going to roll two dice for those nines. I rolled a 10, so he drops out. So the bomber is fallen. Um, we don't get any pilot victory points, but we will get staff victory points. And in fact, I'm going, I'm sorry, experience points is what I'm talking about. In fact, I'm gonna put, for the staff experience point, we got one, but for the destroyed bomber, we don't get any. And so far as victory point wise, we got two. And all these damaged markers go away. Okay, um, so not good. I tried twice to get this swarm and I'm not gonna get it either time. Uh, the This rote we're gonna get, and I forgot to indicate it, this. Oh, let me check one more thing. My apologies. I want to see if luck would have helped me. Right here. A collision cannot be canceled by luck or anything else. And that's the case where I rolled the die. Remember, this guy was coming out of the sun, and I was wondering if that helped him. It did not. So, um, yeah, but going determined is very risky. And uh, that was not good. So the sun marker goes away. Don't have to deal with his jammed weapon. And don't even have to deal with him. He is now buried. Okay. Um, we got our advantage, the rut bonus. But we also have this one, position. 
he's high, he's low, and they were coming from two different directions. So we get two canceled hits to help everybody else who's remaining. <clears throat> and um, uh, off we go. Let's resolve this first. This plane is destroyed, but we still have to resolve um, an oblique attack from somebody coming high. Since this is destroyed, we get a minus one, minus two, minus three to that space. So it's a zero. So it's a zero high. He would have done damage to the bomber, but he takes a hit and he progresses two spaces. So his progression, uh, mind you, oh, we forgot to do, sorry. Um, this one's gonna climb roll to the nose. No, climb roll to the rear. And then this one is going to these two are gonna dive to the nose. Uh, hold on. No. They're going to, this one's going to dive roll to the rear. And then this one's going to go climb roll to the sun. So we can get the sun bonus. Okay, uh, and it's not a dive, it's a dive roll. Okay, all of that was important because, see that little two there? He goes one, two. And that one's gonna be a zero because of the loose formation. Now, uh, he did take a hit, so we're gonna cancel that hit. And this card is done. So now we have two guys coming from the tail. We're gonna grab two cards. We're gonna just start from the top. And it's a tail low, uh, determined, so he hits the bomber. And the hit is not something we roll, so we're going to flip it, and it's one damage. So we're up to seven on that bomber. And then we go to the next one. It is a zero, low, determined he hits. Now, um, you may be wondering what that R is. That R is riding the tail, 47. And I honestly never experienced that before. So let's look it up together. Uh, just a reminder, we're not doing that because we're determined, not evasive. But if you're watching this for tutorial purposes, after applying all other results, you get to attack again immediately or drop into tail. You get to draw another attack card, blah, blah, blah. Okay, that, that's really nice. Hmm. Okay, so um, that does not happen, uh, but we do get a hit. So let's resolve that hit. I got another fuselage with no die roll, and it's another one. Man, four, five, six, seven, Eight. You need ten to kill the guy. So nothing happens there. Okay, now I'm going to draw three continuing fire cards. We're going to start with this guy. His is a zero. Uh, is he climbing? No, he's dive rolling. And it was a zero, so no damage. So this guy's going to return there. And the sun goes away. Um, and then we take the blue off. Okay, now we're gonna go to the top there. Is he diving? Nope, he's climbing. And his is a uh, zero, because um, there's a one, but this is a minus one. So no damage to him. So he climbs to there. And then the last one, is climbing into the sun. If climbing or climb rolling towards a position with the sun, skip continuing fire. So this means that you get to skip the consequence of this card. What's funny is he wouldn't have gotten hit anyways, but had he had any number other than zero, he could have skipped that. Well, that's that's very nice. So they both, they all get back safely. All right, that's a good outcome. Good outcome. 
All right, now we go to turn five. The, there is no move. And we're gonna return our three fighters. And then we do bomb, blast and fleck. Seven. Seven is nothing, right here. Um, you might be wondering, when does blast happen? Blast happens when you start using bombs. So that's the stuff that doesn't occur until the 1943 campaign. It's a very neat mechanic, um, but you won't see it in 1942. Um, okay, so Blast and Flack is done. Now we do Cohesion. Now this is really interesting. We have, hope this goes away. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So unless I roll a nine or a 10, this is gonna be good news. A one. So this flips over to a minus two now. If I fail a cohesion check one more time, this bomber here, because he's the most damaged, becomes fallen. So he would fall out. Um, but yes, we are kaput. So now it's a minus two. Everything out here is a zero. That three is a zero, these twos are a zero, because all the minuses are being applied. So these bombers are, um, they're not in cohesion at all anymore. So uh, with that being said, uh, that's the end of the turn. We are now on the final turn. So this is our last gasp. We're gonna go uh, high and low there. We are going to roll for flak. Make sure our fighters don't get hit. I rolled a 10. A 10 is nothing. So that doesn't help us. It doesn't hurt us either. And then we do a cohesion check. This one will help us because I rolled an eight. Oh, these go away. Uh, we may not be helped. That eight sucks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, I was hoping that this bomber would have dropped out, but he didn't. Okay, so we are, we have three fighters. They're coming in and they, uh, these two benefit from the sun. So we're gonna attack this bomber here. Should we? Yes. And then this low tail is gonna attack that bomber up there. And we're going to do evasive because I don't wanna lose guys in the final mission here. And it means that I get to definitely cancel something from the sun and my, uh, my collision check won't hurt me, which is right there. Now, let me see. Oh, this just is bollocks. Okay, so these guys got this kind of collision check. Um, there's nothing I can do. Whether I was evasive or not, it did not help me. So I can pay a TP or exit. It's the final, basically, they're done. They're not gonna get to do any damage of any kind. And if I had all had them attack that one, that would have been even worse. Because this one was a long shot anyways, to be able to bring him down. But what it means is, is I get none of these advantages. Because I have one single guy attacking that plane. Uh, it doesn't matter which way he's maneuvering, but we'll just say he's going straight through and he's gonna climb. Um, and so we're gonna attack from the tail. And he's coming in uh, low. The other two were high, so here we go. A zero, low, evasive, did not hit. So that's what I get for being conservative. I could have gotten a hit had I been determined. Uh, just for giggles, I would have gotten this, which whether or not we would have passed, the important thing is I would have destroyed it. That would have been two victory or two, two uh, experience points for the pilot, and another victory point for us. So my decision cost us there. Um, so yes, I went conservative, and nothing happened. Okay, uh, now we just do continuing fire. Make sure we get home safely. Uh, the bounce doesn't happen, and nothing happens there. And so, Mr. Wimpy here. 
uh, missed out on a kill. And the mission is over. We still had a decent outcome, but not quite as good as we could have, but it was still okay. But we lost a fighter, and that's not good. So um, that is two, two victory points. Um, but one experience point, and we got that marked. And right now we're looking at four, five, six, seven, eight victory points total uh, for the, after finishing three missions out of six. And in order to win this sucker, I need to get 15. Three, so four, five, six, I have eight. So right now I am on pace for winning, but I had one mission where I went bonkers. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to repeat that. And I lost my best pilot. Uh, he's gone forever, so that's not good. Um, he's come off, and yes, I had one pilot killed. Okay, uh, last thing I'm going to do before I pause this is we will jump into the end here. Uh, they got a really nice, you know, telling points and fate and stuff like that. Replacement pilot is what I'm looking for. If a pilot dies or is wounded, you may replace him. And in the case of a wounded pilot, uh, we're not worrying about wounded pilots. Cross the name of the dead or wounded pilot from your roster. Invent a name, write it in a place. We recommend inventing a name that starts replacing, and we're not allowed to replace a replacement. So, um... So we're going to take Grim, and we need to come up with another name for Grim. So we'll call the next guy. He is no longer an expert. He no longer has luck. We're going to call him Gimpy. Gimpy is now joining the squad, and Gimpy is going to get a green skill. And we're going to just shuffle these up, and let's go with this one. It is Erratic. So he gets E. Now, Mr. Gimpy here, uh, it costs one TP to break away or else the fighter exits. <laughs> so um, that's an interesting one. Uh, basically, all that's saying is after he does his attack, remember we do continuing fire, and depending on which direction he was going, he goes to a return box. What this is saying is he will exit the mission instead of going to return box unless I spend a tactical point. Sometimes, like this last mission, I had a whole bunch. Uh, but there's other times I only had one. So that could or could not hurt us. Um, you get a lot more tactical points as you go into further missions. And things like dropping bombs and stuff like that uses tactical points. Um, there's a lot of reasons why you use tactical points. It's just 1942 is a pretty simple campaign. Um, so, we, we have a replacement pilot, it is Gimpy, um, replacing Grim. And one other thing to point out is our loss conditions. Uh, I explained in the first one of my videos that I didn't understand why you needed both of these numbers, but now I do. I'm only allowed to lose six pilots total. Grim is gone, but I replaced him. So that means I still have 18 pilots in my roster. So, it is possible to have six guys die, but I replace them with green dies, or green green pilots. And uh, what this is saying is you can't lose six. You can only lose five. Um, and so uh, I understand this better now. And then this is saying you can't have more than t uh, two guys in the wounded box. Um, we have zero right now, so we're in good shape there. So we have one out of the six uh, towards losing this campaign. Um, if we stay at that pace, we're going to be fine. So that wraps up Mission 3 of 1942. I hope you're enjoying this and finding it helpful. Um, feel free to uh, like or comment, and uh, I appreciate it. Thank you.